This is director Ilya Suleiman, or S for short. He is the silent protagonist in all of the films he has made up to this point in time. His films, especially the two featured in this video, are primarily about resisting forms of power, and as Debashi suggests in an essay about Suleiman, depicting the present and past of Palestine in a liberating and emancipatory, and not in a vindictive or self-victimizing language. This video essay aims to present how some of his images are liberating and what they mean for Palestine. Divine Intervention, Solomon's film from 2003, starts with this scene, as S's father drives down the road cursing towards other Palestinians. I think it's important not to question why he's angry, even though there can be assumptions about why, but rather to question how he is expressing his anger. In an interview with Solomon shortly after the release of this film, he states, The violence and aggression is interdirected because of the paralysis that comes from the conscious or unconscious knowledge that the dominant force that rules you over can't be shaken. So, out of such stasis and paralysis, what you have is the frustrations that start to be unleashed against one another. The first half of Divine Intervention depicts exactly that, frustrations among Palestinians. In a few cases, we see where that frustration comes from dominant forces. Israeli police are trying to make progressions to the town of Nazareth, which is responded to with a passive-aggressive act. And Israeli creditors who are taking inventory of the father's house. Notice how the father is powerless, staying in one position throughout the whole shot. If he were to act out, it would only cause more hurt. Then S comes in, and a nameless Palestinian woman, played by journalist Manal Kader, is introduced. The tone shifts. Scenes from here on out include acts of resistance while making sarcastic jabs towards Israeli soldiers. For instance, Israeli soldiers at a checkpoint reach for their guns as the woman walks fearlessly towards them. The soldiers hesitate and don't shoot. This act of resistance is blatantly directed at the Israeli soldiers, who only have their guns as a tool of power, but this walk has left them powerless. This scene was actually based on a real incident where Manal crossed the checkpoint on foot and dared the Israelis to shoot her, which they didn't. In an attempt by S to get Manal through the checkpoint into Jerusalem, he blows up a balloon with Yasser Arafat's face on it. While the soldiers are confused, they ask the authorities what to do about the balloon, whether to shoot down an inanimate object or not. The two defy the odds and slip by unnoticed. Then Manal continues her acts of resistance. Once in Jerusalem, she glances at a Palestinian collaborator. I think the look says it all. These images of resistance all sum up to an ultimatum in the climax of the film where Manal is dressed as a ninja. Solomon throws in a flurry of symbols into the scene, all serving as a purpose to demonstrate the power behind the Palestinian in the scene. The film ends with a rather liberating sentiment. Another film by Aliyah Solomon that is about resisting forms of power is his 2009 film, The Time That Remains. Similar to Divine Intervention, this film starts out with driving in a car. This time it's a famous Israeli actor, Menashe Noy, driving. He is lost. In regards to the beginning of this film, Elias says, To this day, most of Israeli society does not feel comfortable where it's at 60 years later. They still want us to love them because they want to feel that they are part of this place. The time that remains shows the life of Elias' father, Fuad, as he experiences the 1948 Nakba. Elias says, while what I was describing in personal ways was true to history, in the sense that the facts were historical, I moved away from those facts and talked about the people living through them at the time. This portion that focuses on Fuad is told in a more linear and narrative structure, because that's how Elias was presented with the stories from his father. 
Here he is witnessing soldiers stripping Palestinian homes of their valuables, much like the scene from Divine Intervention. By depicting his father's experience with the Nakba, Ali is able to express how deeply rooted and tumultuous the occupation has been for Palestinians. I think it shows where Ali is coming from and how this tragedy has affected his generation and the generation before him. In another similar shot to Divine Intervention, Fuad gets beat for hiding weapons. Elias says, I set the camera far away from Fuad's beating because for me it was important for the geographic location to testify to the tragedy, not the blood that results from the beating. It's much stronger to have the wind blow and the ambience protest this tragic image than to do it in a close-up. In this film, Aliyah is also reflecting on his time growing up in a few different ages. In another similar shot to Divine Intervention, Israeli authorities are searching for evidence that Fuad is involved with making and distributing weapons. The Israeli figures are the ones who control the movement in the scene. <laughs> On each side of the frame stands a soldier, which suggests they are surrounded and there's nowhere to hide secrets anymore. Fuad is taken away as S witnesses this powerlessness of Palestinians under Israeli authority in the worst way. As S grows up into a teenager, there is a scene where he witnesses a protest in which Palestinians are shot at. He is not a part of the protest, but we can get a sense that he cares deeply about those in it from his transfixed state. The Palestinians are forced to run away. This scene sets up another scene that happens later in the film when S returns as an adult. He wakes up to the sounds on the street and looks out the window from a similar vantage point as before. There's the same sight, a protest. But the difference is, now there is a woman who tells the Israeli soldiers to go home. Although the fight is still ongoing after all of these years, the woman telling the Israelis to go home without being ridiculed or killed is a significant sign of progress. I think that Aliyah is suggesting that even though the situation has been the same for years, more and more kinds of resistance will prevail. We see this again in a scene closer to the end of the film where young Palestinians are dancing in a club in Ramallah. The authorities are telling them it's curfew, but the party is ignoring the call. This is yet another scene of resistance where authoritative figures are becoming more interested in what culture the Palestinians have made instead of holding power. There's no stopping the party, and there will only be more forms of resistance in the years to come. 